Let's talk about the four C's that play a part if you're buying a house and you're getting a mortgage. So the first C we have is called credit. And credit is one of those things that people all the time are asking like, how do I raise my credit score? What affects my credit score? What credit score are they looking for? So we're gonna tackle that. And where we're gonna start is we're gonna say that credit is a picture of your past financial habits. So what do I mean by that? Well, your habits determine how you pay your bills. There are some people that pay their bills early, there are some people that pay their bills right on time, and then there are some people who pay their bills late. And all of those things factor into your credit score. And it's looking at what kind of bill payer are you? So if you're someone who doesn't pay attention to the due date and kind of just pays it, that's gonna affect your credit and your credit score. So if that's you, you wanna get really clear on let's pay that on time or even a little bit early. Now, another part of credit that can kind of play into that, that past financial, is have you ever made what I call a mistake? And every one of us have. Like if I listed all the credit mistakes I made in my life, I, this video would be way too long and nobody would care. But there are some credit mistakes that when you make them, the repercussions go on for a limited time or years. Most everything can be resolved within about seven years, but that's part of that credit. So it's your past. What happened in the past? So what are some ways that you can start fixing past mistakes today? First of all, pay your bills on time. Another one you can do is look at, if you have credit cards, how much is available and are you charging them up to the limit and then paying them off? Charging them up to the limit, paying them off. Or maybe you're charging them up to the limit and you're just paying a little bit. All of that plays into it. So you wanna look at, can I get those credit cards where I'm not charging above 50% of the limit because that really helps your score. Is there a credit card that I can pay off every single month? Because from the credit standpoint, the, the credit um, judges, we're just calling them judges, like when you pay off your credit card every month, they clap for you. They're like, great job, Jenny, you paid it off this month. So you wanna look at, can we do that even if it's on a low credit card? So like I have one credit card that about two things bill to, just so every month I'm getting that, woohoo, you did it. Uh, it's only like $100 worth of stuff, but I'm paying it off every month and it makes a difference. So that's one. So your credit. The second one is capacity. What is the capacity that you have to pay that loan back? Now that's where debt to income comes in. So like if you are making X amount of dollars, then they're going to say, well, you can only afford to pay out this much in car payments, credit cards, houses, any kind of reoccurring debt, child support, anything with student loans, all of that kind of stuff. Because you have to have a certain amount of money to live on. And so that capacity, so like if you are willing to buy a certain price point of a house and your lender says your debt to income ratio is too high, that means you have too much debt for the amount of income, then you have to talk to them and be like, well, what are some ways I could change that? So you could pay something off. You could get a raise at work. Like that one's not always quick and easy changing your debt to income ratio. Because if you're like me, your car loan is a certain amount of years. In our case, our boat loan is a certain amount of years. And it just takes time to pay those off. But can you, take on a side job to get those paid off. Maybe, we've done that in the past before. Chad's taken on a side job and got something paid down so that our debt to income came down. So remember, capacity and credit, and then capital. So capital is assets or cash because 
when you're buying your first house, they want to make sure that you have obviously your down payment and you have a little bit of money in reserve. So if something comes up and when they're talking about reserves, they want to be able to see that you'll be able to make your house payment if something happens for a short period of time. So like a lot of times what we're talking about is we like for you to have about six months of reserves in a savings account, um, maybe in some type of stock market account, but you want to be able to access it. A 401k is a little bit different because that is geared to retirement. But can you access six months worth of living expenses if you had to? So if you're like starting out on this home buying process, that's a big one. Can you get some reserves built up so that you've got a nice uh, nest egg in case something comes up? Now, collateral. So what collateral is, is that's where you're using something else to buy something else. So we see collateral coming in more to play if you're buying investment properties or second homes or things like that because you can put up your primary residence as collateral. You could take out a HELOC where you're pulling some of the equity out to make your down payment, things like that. But those are really the four big C's of, of just the whole home buying process. What does your credit look like? That's a pass look. What is your um, capacity look like? What does your collateral look like? And then what is your um, capital look like, your savings account? So hopefully this helps.